Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to be discussing living, non-living or dead. As a way for us to start thinking about what it means for something to be living and how we classify living things, we're going to discuss what we mean by living, non-living and dead things. We're going to go through the features of each one and some examples to help you to be able to understand and predict the difference. So firstly, looking at living things. Okay, we're going to unpack this a little bit further in the next video, or looking at their characteristics, but essentially all living things are made up of cells. They may be a single cell, like the bacterium that we've got over here, or they may be complex multicellular organisms, like the plants and animals and fungi that we see here. All living things share seven main characteristics, um, and we have an acronym that helps us to remember what they are, called Mrs. Gren. Now, in the next video, we're going to unpack what each of these letters refers to. But the idea is that all living things share these seven main characteristics in some capacity. Now, how that looks for a bacterium versus a dugong versus a peacock it can vary, um, but the idea is that they all share these things. Non-living things, however, like clouds and sand, minerals and fire, um, have never been alive. Okay, so for something to be non-living, it has never been alive. It, it, at no point in its existence would it be considered to be living. Non-living things are not made up of cells. We call them material objects. You know, so sand has no cells. There's no cells that, that come together to make grains of sand, nor the clouds in the atmosphere, nor the water in a river or a lake, whatever. Okay, and the idea then is we're saying that non-living things then lack that they don't have this these seven characteristics. Okay? Now some of them, um, you know, we can kind of argue the point and say, oh, this does this move or does it, you know, so on and so on. You can kind of argue about each one. But the idea is that something that is non-living can't do all of the seven things. And especially once we can define those a little bit more carefully, we can see that they don't actually really do any of them in the way we define them in biology. Okay? And so now we have a look at some dead things. All right, so... Now, the, the difference between living and dead is, is probably fairly concrete to us. We can kind of get that. But it's just being able to distinguish between something that's dead and something that was non-living is what's important here. For something to be considered a dead thing, it used to be alive, but is not now. Okay, so at some point in its existence, it was living or part of a living thing, but is not now. Um, it is made up of cells, but either no longer has the features of a living thing, um, you know, so no longer has those seven characteristics of itself, or is now not connected to um, the remains of a living thing. So considering, say, like a flower. Okay, so a flower, when it's attached to the plant, or an apple when it's connected to the tree, are part of a living thing. They are living. However, once you separate that flower, once you separate that apple, it now is essentially dying. It, ha it, it is no longer connected to a living thing. It can't do have those characteristics or features of a living thing on its own. Okay, so it starts to dry up, it starts to, to, you know, to turn brown, it loses its nutrients, it starts to decay and break down um, because it's no longer connected to the, the rest of the living thing. Or, you know, we think about exa you know, extinct examples like a thylacine here, you know, or a, a dead animal, that once something has happened and those, those features or those functions stop existing, stop happening, that then it, it's no longer living. It starts to break down and decompose so that the nutrients and its parts get to be recycled back into the environment. Okay, so we looked at this idea that living things are made up of cells, that they share seven common characteristics called Mrs. Gren, which we will unpack in the next video. Non-living things have never been alive. They're not made up of cells. They are material objects. They lack one or more of the features of those seven, uh, those seven features of living things. And dead things um, have been made up of cells. They used to be alive, but they are not anymore. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.